For this week's direct instruction, we will be reviewing chapters 10, 11, 12, and 13 from the Red Badge of Courage. Throughout the lecture, there are three questions that I would like you to answer. I strongly suggest that when you come to a question, you pause the, re the video, answer the question in a separate document or in the submission box for this assignment, and then continue with the video when you have completed the question. Okay. We are going to begin with a review of Chapter 10. In Chapter 10, Henry is once again um, faced with his own guilt. The tattered man continues to question him about his wounds. Where are they? Where is he wounded? The tattered man is similar in some respects to Henry's own conscience. He keeps reminding Henry that Henry has failed to do his duty and that when he was faced with battle, instead of fighting, he decided to run. Henry can't take the, the stress of the um, tattered man, so he abandons him. This further lowers our outlook of Henry. Um, he may, Henry may have left the man for his own sanity um, simply because his, the guilt was taking him over him too much. However, even abandoning the man, Henry is tormented by his own guilt. Um, he wants to die. In chapter 11, it begins with a scene that illustrates Hen Henry's mental turmoil. Um, one group of soldiers is retreat retreating while one moves towards the enemy. So it's this whole, the same internal conflict that Henry is dealing with. Should he move towards and compete in the battle or should he run away and save himself? Henry continues to remain in constant conflict with himself. On one hand, he sees himself as a villain. On the other hand, he tries to justify his running in terms of it being in the best interest of the army. Um, what he means by this is that he will live to fight another day because he didn't take part in this specific battle and die. Um, there is a time when Henry considers joining the group of soldiers moving towards the battle, but once again, he cannot go through with joining the fight. He's just not ready to commit to the possibility of death. It seems that Henry is on a see seesaw um, from fear to courage and then from heroic to cowardly. He keeps going back and forth. This brings to our first question. Question number one. In this chapter, Henry again shows the humanness of his character and his inability to face his fears. As readers, we continue to see his struggle. At this point, what do you think of Henry as a soldier and as a man? Do you find his seesawing understandable? Or are you becoming angry and annoyed with his character and why? Again, I encourage you to pause the recording at this time answer the question, and then return to the video when you are ready. Chapter 12. In Chapter 12, Henry seems to get his wish from the earlier chapter, where he hopes for the troop's defeat so that he can justify his decision to run. However, we also encounter an instance of irony. <laughs> Henry is finally wounded. However, he doesn't receive his wound in battle, but from questioning a panicked soldier on his own side. Um, therefore, he's now received his own red badge of courage. A kind soldier helps Henry rejoin his regiment, thinking that he is doing Hen Henry a favor. Yet is he? Um... You know, Henry has run from the battle that his regiment's fought in, so he may be seen as a coward, um, and he will be seen as a coward by those in his regiment. However, Henry imagines that returning to his regiment could very well be horrible. It is interesting to note that Henry never looks to see the man's face that helps him, so he has no idea who directs him back to his regiment. This brings us to our second question. Henry is a very self-involved character, as is emphasized by him being so wrapped up in his own mental state that he can't even look up to notice who is helping him. Discuss other situations in this book so far where Henry has been too self-involved to accurately see those around him. Chapter 
Chapter 13. In this chapter, we're given two very different views of Henry. The first, he's a liar, only caring for himself. He lies to cover for the fact that he has run from the battle. He says that he was in fact wounded and not hit in the head with a gun. He seems to lie with ease, with considerable glibness, they say. It just comes to him naturally. At the same time, he's very hopeful. Um, when nursed by a soldier later and questioned about his injury, he seems unable to lie as well as in the beginning of the chapter. Um, he shows concern for another soldier when he realizes that the soldier has given him his own blanket. Um, so this is a big step for our self-involved Henry, who really only cares about himself. Again, we see the contrast between the other soldiers and Henry, as the soldiers welcome Henry back to the group and care for him. Um, you know, he is very self-absorbed and only worried about himself, whereas all these other soldiers um, seem to want to take him under their wing and make sure that he, um, you know, has everything that he needs and that he's taken care of. And this bling brings us to final question for this review. Do you think that Henry needed to lie? Why or why not? Has this chapter changed your perspective of Henry? How and why? Um, thank you for your hard work so far in this book. I know it is challenging, um, especially to keep up with the reading and all of the assignments. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, or need help with anything, please send me an email and ask, and have a good week.